Hey, how you doing? My name is Daniel. This is the Real Infidel Channel. Today we're going to discuss um, combat setup. Okay, um, your vest carrier, your battle belt, and how you, how and why you would want to do things the way you do them. Now, I'm not telling you how to do them. I'm telling you that however you decide to do them, you need to um, train with your equipment. So you know when you're going for a rifle mag, boom, you got your rifle mag, you can insert in your weapon. Um, that's positioning the equipment in the holder and the holder on your vest. So um, this is how I carry my gear. Um, this I'm not telling you that this is the only way to carry it. This is just how I found that it works for me. What I have is a uh, Renegade plate carrier. It's uh, it's not a standalone plate carrier. You can't, which means you can wear soft armor and hard armor inside of it um i have the hard armor i have in here right now is renegade uh 3a rifle armor um, or, or sappy plates they're a sappy cut um and they provide what i would need unless i was something maybe if i was doing some long range shooting it would provide protection for everything but i would want the mobility for a shooter's cut which is just basically cuts the bottom corners off and just provides you with a, um, a plate to cover your extreme vitals. Um, either, war, either way, they, they both are effective, they both work. So, um, one thing I always have on me, my, my gloves, these are mechanics gloves, um, my eye protection, right? So, these are my daytime eye protection. I have a set of boxers that I normally wear. Um, they're in my, my go bag, so I don't want to take them out and leave them out, so I'm using these to demonstrate eye protection. Um, a hat to keep the sun out of your eyes or to keep the sun off your face or your back of your neck. Um, the reason I have my hat on backwards is because it says what sheriff's office I work for. So um, I don't, I'm not going to broadcast that all over YouTube. So um, I go with three rifle mags across my front, all positioned where when I, when I extract them, I can insert them in my gun. All right, I don't position them backwards. Um, this is just my preference. And not one preference is better than the other. As long as you try, train them. This one, you'd have to do this. So, I position my rifle. My bullet's facing this way. Um, this is my glove holder. And my blood type. Always have that on you because if you get wounded and you need to go to the hospital, it makes it a lot easier for them to put blood type, blood, your blood in you. That being said, if they don't have or know your blood type, they will use O negative, which is universal type. I wear a, um, a true spec uh, battle shirt. It's a, a combat shirt. It has pockets here with um, Velcro on both sides where you can put uh, your patches if you're into that stuff, or you can put glit tape on it so you can be seen by IR. Um, it has little things down here where you can, little pockets down here where you can put pens in. It doesn't have them on this side because most people are right-handed, so they pull it right, stick it back in. Um, it is very durable. It's comfortable. When you have this type of shirt on, it's like wearing an undershirt with with real shirt sleeves. So it, it makes it a lot more comfortable to wear when you have to have it on your under your armor all day long. Um, comfort is 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 paramount when you're having to deal with your armor all day long. Right here is another tourniquet holder. Um, oh, well, first off, I guess I should discuss my battle belt. This is a, it's called a battle belt, all right? It goes all the way around. The difference between a belt and a battle belt is uh, a belt goes in through your laces. This has an underbelt with Velcro where your battle belt Velcro is right to it. Um, I, I like them. I wore them all. I always wore an extra belt when I was in the Army. I wear them as a police officer. So, I, I really like this. Um, the battle belt also has molly attachments, so you can put gear on it and attach it where it's stable on your belt and doesn't slide around. Um, I like to keep the front of myself pretty flat in case I need to go prone, I can. So that's why I only have single stack mags here. I have my radio, my communications device holder right here. And this is for a uh, water bottle. You should always carry water with you. You need water to stay alive. Over here, I have um, two mags, two spare rifle mags, and two spare pistol mags. Now, these aren't ideal where they're at, 
However, if I put them here, it goes too high up here and my rifle won't sit. But the idea is when I empty these mags, I reload. If I empty my pistol mag, I reload from my pistol mag on my pouch right here. And then I can um, restock these with, I can pull them from over here and put them here or here, wherever I need them. So, um, my back to my battle belt. Um, I carry an extra tourniquet. I use it at work, so I have to go to the supply at work and get a new one. Um, but I do, like I said, I carry multiple. Then over here, I got a Blackhawk um, OD green rifle mag holder with um, a tandem pistol mag holder. Same principle where I pull it out and insert it in my gun. Uh, same with the, the pistol mag. Pull it out and insert it in my gun. So there's no having to twist it, turn it or anything. It just goes straight in the gun. I get the gun back hot. I can get it back in action and get bullets on booger eaters quicker. Um, on this side of my belt, I carry my IFAC. This is your individual first aid kit. Um, you should have everything in here from a tourniquet to gauze, dressings, uh, maybe even a little boo-boo kit in case you hurt yourself and you don't, it doesn't, it's not a, um, critical wound but you can address that when time comes appropriate and then also on this leg i carry my on the side of the pants i carry my um my sidearm it's the sig um, i did take the bail off because i don't like bales uh, i think they're perfect for people that aren't like young police officers or young military people that aren't um as familiar with weapons and don't know how to keep the retention of the weapon uh, I think they're a hindrance when you're engaging and you have to do a fast transition drill so I uh, tend not to use I tend to take the bail off my I have to wear them at work but I tend to take them off my, my own personal gear um, yeah so this this is my setup uh, there's plenty of other things you can add I, I do have glit tape um, that I keep in my my assault kit and uh, I have IR strobe that I can throw on here, this side or this side, wherever I need to. Um, but this is just, I just wanted to show you the basic loadout. So when you're when you're looking for armor, look for a reputable company. Don't go out and buy airsoft armor. Um, it, it's cheap. It's going to fall apart after your first use. It's going to start falling apart during your first use. And it, it, when you start losing equipment, it means your day's getting bad. All right, It's equipment that you're carrying because you might need to save your life or somebody else's. Um, just do some research, look into what you think you're going to need to carry, and, uh, and and adjust it accordingly. I will say um, there's a YouTuber called Garantham. Most of you that have seen my video probably know who he is. Garantham has a pretty good uh, video on how to set up your... Oh, I got a phone call. Let me cancel that. How to set up your, your plate carrier. Um, I tend to go with a minimalist approach because I like to be able to move. Um, I told you all in my, my bug out video, if the time comes to bug out, I'm going to bug out with my family. When the time comes that I need to bug out, it's because my family's in danger. So, um, when the time comes to bug out, I will be bugging out with them and going to an alternate bug in location that in, in doing that, I told you that I would, I would most likely operate under the seer principle, the survive, evade, resist, and escape. I know I got the acronym screwed up last time I was was one of my first videos give me a break but um i would use that principle to make sure that my family is transported when i'm out moving my family it's not i'm not looking for a fight right i don't want them involved in it i don't want them to become a casualty so my main purpose is um to move from one point to another and get my family delivered to that point as safely as possible in the event that something does happen to one of my family members that's why i carry first aid on my on my backpack i'll have i showed you i have a bunch of first aid in there um in my little side bag, uh, my satchel, we'll call it. I have plenty of first aid in there as well. So if something does happen, I can uh, treat my family the best of my, to the best of my ability and then continue to move them to the alternate bug-in location. All right. So when you're doing this, think about this. Think about how much do you already have to carry, all right? If you're bugging out, how much do you already have to carry? You got your kit, not, ex not including your what's on you. You have your survival kits that are in your backpack you're gonna be carrying water 
you're going to be carrying food. You're going to be carrying stuff for your family. Um, because if you're the adult in the family, you should be helping and assisting your children and your wife as they carry theirs or your husband. Uh, one of them might become a casualty and I need to, need to, uh, secure their gear and then carry it. So I, I tend to keep it light. Um, there are plenty of things you can buy out there. You can buy smoke grenades. You can buy all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I tend not to do that. Like I, I don't want to have to carry it. Um, I'm good enough in the woods to go unseen by animals. So I know I'm good enough in the woods to go unseen by humans. So, um, just think about it and whatever you do, put your gear together the way that you want and the way that you're going to train to make yourself more efficient in the way you carry your gear. I do like this camouflage pattern. This camouflage pattern is um, not as good as woodland in my opinion, but you know, you can't readily find a woodland combat shirt. And I do like the combat shirts. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, they look cool, but they're also really tactic tactically effective. So we'll just call them tactical. Um, but this, this will blend into almost any environment it'll blend into woodland it'll blend into plains it'll blend into um, desert this is a this is an effective uh, camouflage so um, I have the, the battle pants the battle dress pants and I have the battle dress top and I'm just looking now and see my gig lines completely jacked up but I'm not in the military anymore so I really don't care um, yeah so whatever you're gonna do do some research, try some different camo patterns, go out in the woods, see if you can sneak up on game and out in the woods. Um, that it's going to show you how to move quietly. It's going to show you how to move being unseen. So it, it's only going to benefit you in your, uh, when you're becoming a situation where you need to bug out or you need to relocate from one position to another with the going unseen or unheard. Um, train, 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 train. And when you think you've got it down, train some more. So that being said, I appreciate y'all. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions on how to how to tighten up my gear, please leave it in the comments below. And uh, remember, be safe and always kick sand in the face.